the Grey Hat Beard podcast. And we are back and we're going into this one. So if you've just joined this episode, we have just talked about the latest news. So have a listen to that first. But if you want to get straight into it, we're Grey Hat Beard and we're going to talk about how we learn. I think it's a very important thing. Uh, in in the technology industry, things are always changing. You always want to keep up date. A lot of people feel a, a bit overwhelmed, and uh, I think rightly we speak to clients, they kind of just feel there's a deluge of things changing, and trying to keep up with those is very hard. So we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how we learn. I'm going to talk about three topics. Um, we're first going to talk about the the kind of more formal way of learning through certification, training courses and pieces like that. Then we're going to go into the more learning by um, learning from others, picking up from blogs, tweets and pieces, and then go into learning by doing. But to kick off, Al, do you want to start talking about certifications and training a bit? Yeah, so I think it's certifications have always been a really interesting subject for Microsoft because they have always had this desire that people get certified in their technology and they measure partners uh, partners capability based on the certifications that they have um, and as a participant in those those certifications we've always kind of questioned well you know what is the benefit because they go out of date and they might be out of date by the time you take them and therefore there's always this sort of discrepancy and as the the rate of technical change has grown so that discrepancy has grown you know the mcsa mcse mcsd certifications you know i've got certifications that i took four or five years ago that theoretically are still valid although the technology is just completely changed it's completely transformed and so it's this week that microsoft have announced that as of june this year they're retiring all of those mcsa mcse mcsd certifications and that's going to be a real wrench for a lot of people because having to retake more exams um, creates challenges for people. You know, they have to learn things um, and it's not necessarily things that they're doing on a day to day basis. So it's always been quite a challenge to kind of, you know, persuade people, you know, as working for a, a Microsoft Gold partner, we're dependent on people taking those exams and passing them even though they may not be actually carrying out those activities on a day-to-day basis. So there's a real challenge to to learn. So why, and, why do you think people should do certifications? Well, I think previously it was to get a tick in a box. Um, <laughs> and I think genuinely, you know, it's, yeah. it was because you wanted a certification to put on your CV. Um, mm. It wasn't necessarily a demonstration of up-to-date skills. Whereas now I think it's changing and the new role based certifications that Microsoft have, I think are structured in a much more useful way um, to actually demonstrate skills. Um, And they because they are starting with the one star fundamentals exams, which are really, really good to get an introduction. They never really had anything that was an introduction to go power platform what is it dynamics what is it and so clearly splitting out you know the four streams of technology to for azure microsoft 365 dynamics 365 and a power platform at the one star fundamental level gives people the opportunity to understand what those technologies are but then they've got clear sort of roadmaps to go right you've got the associate the two star exams next and they are practical they are role based so you know that you're not getting oh i'm a master of everything i am you're getting right i can manage teams i can manage dynamics sales i can do those things to a level um, and i can demonstrate that i've done that through the exams that i've taken and then you've got the expert ones as well that are sat on top so i think that the change to these exams is much better and i think that Mm. the exams are evolving with the technologies as well they're not set to just be static so you know they change over time the questions change over time they're trying to make them much easier to stay on top of changes in the technology um, which i think is a key thing you know you're not saying i've got a certification in teams 2020 you're saying i've got a certification in teams and more exams will come out and more certifications will come out 
I think I think also one one of the benefits because I'll be honest for a long time I just didn't see the point in certifications and exactly what you said there it felt like a tick in the box and the CV mm. and I always felt that uh, I should be able to get an interview and speak to people and demonstrate the that that I could put across far better my experience talk about the projects and things I've done rather than I've read a load of books and managed to uh, fudge my way through an exam I, I think you're absolutely right that the exams feel a lot more up to date now. I think there's also the benefit of uh, challenging yourself to go a little bit broader because you tend to just do often in your day to day work, you will tend to do the same kind of topics that you get on there by doing a certification. It opens your eyes up to the the wider pieces there. For example, the Azure ones, Kubernetes, something I've never really felt the need to sort of push into. Yeah. But they're there in the exams and they're, they're a pretty yeah. fundamental part on it. So you do uh, need to learn a bit more, too. And I think that's I think that's a key point is that the exams are actually quite broad. So, you know, they are, some of them are, are probably too broad. You know, I can think of a few that I've looked at and just gone, that, <laughs> scared, that scares me. Yeah. Um, but a lot of Net them. Networks in Azure. Oof. Well, uh, yeah. The, yeah. The Azure ones, the security ones. The security they ones. They are broad. They are broad, <laughs> yeah. But a lot of them, you know, I think that the ability to do something like, a, you know, the dynamics fundamentals, as a one star certification and then follow on with the core dynamics you can understand enough about dynamics to understand where that fits in and where it's useful but at the same time you can still do the teams so you could be you know having multiple certifications across different subjects more easily because they're a lower level i mean i think you know for an organization that has multidisciplinary staff having you know an area of expertise where they've got a three star certification in their their area of focus and then having a couple of two stars and all of the one stars that immediately you know if i were looking to hire somebody i'd be saying yeah that's the that's the breadth that i'm looking for and i could measure it quite easily um but i have as a an employer as a somebody who's hiring people i have more trust that people who have done those exams actually understand more in them it, it, they're they're moving towards more of the workloads that you'd yep. use so as your dynamics office 365 it's very rare that you just sit within one of those areas um you're gonna have some solutions that are going to use all those different workloads at yep. the same time so to have an understanding and appreciation of of what the capabilities are of, of those different areas is is definitely key going forwards um because that's going to be the way that it is um you know dynamics power platform the, calling out to logic that, apps and azure functions absolutely. to do some extra bits that the platform itself can't do to handle some more custom scenarios then you know you've gone from dynamics which is sales uh, sales things like that you know business applications into how do i secure this http endpoint <laughs> yeah and i think that's that's the so the interesting thing doing a lot with the, the power platform at the moment, the interesting thing is that transition to get those power platform certifications. You need to understand more of the dynamics, which is really tough for the people coming from the SharePoint side of it because they may not have ever used dynamics, whereas the dynamics people are going, well, I already understand all this dynamic stuff so I can get these power platform certifications really easily. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there is that that cross pollination. You know, there still needs to be work to make it easier because, I mean, you, you had it spot on there, Gary, the, the ability to say I can extend Power Platform into Azure, mm. that's going to scare the pants off anyone from Dynamics. But uh, it's going to you need to have that cross pollination. And that's where the, some of these new role based certifications and exams really do. They serve their purpose really well. But I think yeah. the the other side, so I, I'm sure some people are listening to this and, and going that that's lovely, but I don't want to be able to pay tens, hundreds of pounds for a, a train certification. For me, what I love about the community, especially around Microsoft 365, is that you don't just need to go through training certification. You don't have to follow that path. There are people that are very happy, such as the three of us, to uh, go out and share their experience and talk about what they've gone through. And you can listen to that, whether it's through podcasts. That There's some great ones. I love the Microsoft Cloud Show, great way of listening, SP Dev Weekly, um, the Microsoft 365 developer one. Um, we'll put some of these into the, the 
the show notes there's some great other podcasts you can listen to and just rather than delve through absolutely everything people will pull together some of those summaries and uh, share those out there's twitter out there as well there's people taking the content listening to all the different areas and then retweeting the things they think is relevant as well i so think the, the other the other key element is you know if i think about you know 10 years ago technet and MSDN were not resources you could learn from. Yes. Docs, yeah. Microsoft Docs now are resources that you can learn from. And then you've got Microsoft yes. Learn as well. Absolutely. So if you go on and you say, right, well, Microsoft Learn, give me everything, it's up to date. I mean, I remember using Plural Sight and, and the challenge ended up being the videos didn't stay up to date with the, the mm. exams and the content and the versions that you were looking for. And, you know, in the same way that the exams need to stay up to date, what we're learning needs to stay up to date to match the current exam. But I 100% agree what you're saying. I, I think my point about it is that you can learn by listening that rather than that more formal, if you're looking through the Microsoft Learn, you're going through a stage one, you need to set aside the time, you need to get in the right frame of mind. For me, I take a lot more things in by that, that kind of splurge of information, that that pull through from Twitter, you start to get through what are the big trending topics. You start to see the power platform is, is so powerful and hearing bits of power platform that are more interesting. So docs.microsoft.com is massive. Microsoft Learn's massive. All these certifications, there's huge amounts in there. But you can get from what other people are talking about. You can get what the hot topics are, what the interesting things and Either they're hot topics because everyone's talking about or you hear things go, hmm, that's really interesting. The machine learning, I love some of that stuff. It's not something that's hit my day to day. So it's not something that I'd actively go and learn about necessarily. But from the, the things that are coming out from Twitter and other things, it really picks up. And I'd also say it doesn't need to be from the these kind of community experts. It doesn't need to be from the your your MVPs that they are great. Don't don't get me wrong. Sorry, Gary, <laughs> don't, don't want to downplay you there. But also <laughs> what, what people are chatting about in the office, you know, go pop to the pub after work, have a coffee, chat to other people and uh, hear what they're looking at, hear what interesting things they're doing, because it, it might be, again, outside your sphere, it might be about home automation and doing Raspberry Pi, but it, it inspires you and makes you look at other things. So I think that that learning by listening and picking up other things is a really important part as well. Yeah, um, learning by listening, the easiest thing is podcasts. So Absolutely. obviously you can listen to us. Um, but yeah, I've been listening to Control Alt Azure, um, oh, yeah. another podcast uh Tobias Zimmergren and UC Royn um and that's all Azure and you know it, it's really interesting to see uh how things are discussed from the cloud architect side um you know the things that uh you know not as user friendly things that you've got to think about uh, for you know securing applications and things and you know I could just sit and listen to that whilst I'm doing some work um and just you know it's like have, i'm not in the office so i can't chat to people but people can chat to me uh in knockouts not back um but uh yeah you, you just do though don't you that information. <laughs> you yeah, do end well, up talking yes, back to the podcast <laughs> 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 Doing exactly that with Visa talking about a, a certain airport in Amsterdam that uh, I, I went to because the bleeping was appalling on it. But it, you do, you do. Yeah. I, I, I think it's so true. You do end up chatting uh, back to these things as well. Yeah, it's but, the rubber duck kind of approach, isn't it? It's the you've got a problem. <laughs> yeah. I talk to the rubber duck. Uh, everybody, you just talk to a podcast. <laughs> and everybody everybody has. Yeah, everybody yeah. has something they talk to, don't they? The, yeah. the rubber duck, the plant in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so I think I think there's doing the formal training certification, there's listening, taking board, taking that flow of information. But Gary, I think there's a third way that, that we tend to learn as well. Uh, yeah. Um, so getting involved, basically. Uh, this GitHub is a huge resource of, um, you know, samples and uh, even just little hacks that people have done. So i love github because you can find something that someone else has done uh say for example oh i need to call sharepoint with a, a rest call i need to do a particular action can't quite figure it out from the docs okay there's a whole library here that does that so office 365 cli is one it's just a series of commands it's making calls to SharePoint in the background. You can go and look at a command and you can see exactly what it's doing under the hood. You get that transparency. You can then look at that and go, 
ah, okay, great. It's calling this endpoint and it's passing this data. Yes, you could use the CLI, but actually if you just need something, I don't know, in Flow, for example, uh, or a Logic app, you could just look at it and go, right, great, I've got my answer. Um, by getting an understanding of how things work out there by just looking at the source code on GitHub. Um, and, and also get involved from a contributor's point of view as well. Um, you know, learning how a product uh, or a library on, on GitHub works, how you contribute to that, the different steps that you need to go through. We talked about it at the beginning with the, uh, you know, the etiquette um, GitHub repository is that one side of it is getting something out there for people to use and to be able to see how it works. The other side of it is how do people contribute to keep it going? Um, and, and learning how to contribute is a good learning experience anyway, because you have to communicate, you have to be open, you have to, well, one, read the docs. If you're not quite sure, ask questions, um, creating issues and having a conversation with someone who you can't just ring up the phone and have a chat with or, you know, have a one to one. Your communication style then has to kind of adapt to to, to, to the forum that you're speaking in. Um, and then, you know, go through the motions, try what you, tr you know, try what what you want to uh I say try through uh, learning almost yeah. or learn through trying, yeah. fail a bit, succeed, um, yes. but just be open. Um, and, and I think you you alluded to the community of being really good um, in Microsoft 365. I get the feeling from the GitHub repositories that that feeling just is the same. We're all in a position that we're all trying to learn. We encourage people to learn. If you have any issues or you have questions, ask them and you will get an answer back. Um, you know, don't be fearful of doing it um, and fear that, oh, because you've done something or you've not quite understood, then people be, oh, you know, this guy's an idiot or whatever. It's, it's not that whatsoever. There will be some GitHub repositories out there that will be a bit like that, but I was certainly the some of the stack overflows. Yeah, exactly. But the Microsoft 365 ones are definitely not that way. And I think that just comes from the history of the community um, yeah. going back it. you know, to what that you were saying now about 10 years ago. And it's just blog posts now. It, it, it's, it's that we've always been sharing um, yeah. throughout those years. So and I, th and sure. I think that's I think that's a key thing that, you know, 10 years ago, people weren't sharing. But now, you yes. know, somebody does something cool, somebody does something really useful. It's much easier to share it, and it's you know there's a common protocol using GitHub. There's a common platform that we can use, so it makes it much easier for everybody to access it if yeah. they know how to use GitHub. Um, and that goes for I think that you know that's Microsoft 365, but that's across the board now. You know you look for a GitHub solution that you can actually test and see how it works. Um, yeah. And because Microsoft are putting stuff there as well, then you know it's. It's not necessarily, you know, official, but it's not locked down and you can still see all of the source code, which is fantastic. And I, yeah. and I think Microsoft have done a great job adopting that that open source, that change of culture now, because you look 10 years ago, there was co projects, there were shared sources yeah. out there, but there was a lot of expectation if you put things up there, that it would be perfect, that you get everything out, that you get full support. Yeah. And I think over, over the last 10 years, what's changed is not necessarily that people are sharing more, but that people are more open to it being shared earlier, knowing that it's not the perfect thing. And, and I, I would say, yeah, do, do work out loud, do ask do you think of yourself a little bit don't ask stupid questions do do feel free to google before you uh put a question up there uh, i that's, think that would that, be good but that's uh, an, so my advice on that one is always you know spend your half hour looking yeah and if you're asking a question say what you've already tried or where you've already yeah. looked yeah. you know so share that people right aren't repeated and yeah share what you've already done you know if you're answering a question it always it's always helpful to know yeah. what the thought process has been so far and, and from the other side of that, from a maintainer's perspective, so if that takes you a while to understand how to, you know, contribute to this project, for me, that's an indicator of there's some work that needs to be done. It shouldn't take you half an hour to go away and to try and understand something. It should be an easier process than that. Yeah. So then you start to look at actually are, are our documents good enough to help people contribute? Are we um, expecting a level of technical understanding to contribute and should we 
have to do that because we want people to join who have maybe not got that technical experience now, but will gain that through yeah. contributing to the project. Um, so it's an interesting, yeah, there's, there's, there's different sides to it. And and I think I, I think it's an important point. I would say for our etiquette one, we know that the documentation there is not scratch. We want to get this stuff out early, and we will build on that. Uh, absolutely, I think that's a general thing. Yeah. Um, the the last subject I make on this is uh, I know I spend most evenings on my laptop, and I try not to do work stuff. I try and do things that are a little bit outside that and learn. And and I've been doing that for years and years. And and that is that is how I've learned from things. Um, you will be able to learn in your day job. If you're very lucky, you have an organisation that, that gives enough time to be able to learn those things and, and get involved in that. But it's not always the case. Um, I, I'm not going to say you have to spend all your spare time doing this, uh, but there is huge opportunities to to do it there, do things outside in your own time on there. But I think we we will have to wrap up. Uh, I will say we did send out uh, a tweet asking others how to learn, and we had a great response from uh, Phil Worrell, uh, who talks about there's lots of resources out there from Microsoft Learn to EDX to third party courses. It just takes time, experience, and a good plan of action. And I, I think that's a really good point. Um, I will also share talking about the podcasts. Phil's got a great list of uh, Microsoft 365 podcasts, so I'll put that in the show notes as well. Mm. Uh, otherwise, we will have to wrap up. Uh, it's still a busy Friday for us and uh, got more meetings to come up. So uh, thank you very much for everyone who's uh, listening. Uh, I've been Gray. I've been Hat. And I've been Beard. <laughs> thank you very much all and see you the same time in two weeks time. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Grey Hat Beard podcast. The song Drink Up My Mateys was brought to you by Black Bones under a non-commercial attribution license.